went down to the river Jordan, where John baptized three. When I walked the devil in hell, says Johnny baptized me. I say, Roger and roll, roll, Roger and roll. My soul arise, heaven, Lord, for the year Roger and roll. Well, some say John was a Baptist. Some say John was a Jew. But I say John was a preacher because my Bible says so too. I say, Roger and roll. Roger and roll, my soul arise in heaven, Lord, for the year of Roger and roll. Hallelujah, Roger and roll, Roger and roll, my soul arise in heaven, Lord, for the year of Roger and roll. Juliet Morgan was the only child of Frank and Lila Morgan of Montgomery, Alabama. Born February 21, 1914, she was a seventh generation Southerner and a third generation Alabaman, born into a white family with high status in the community. In 1939, six years before the famous Montgomery bus boycott, Morgan began writing letters to the Montgomery Advertiser, the city's local newspaper, denouncing the horrible injustices she witnessed on the city buses. In these letters, she said that segregation was unchristian and wrong and the citizens of Montgomery should do something about it. The response was immediate. Morgan lost her job at the local bookstore. One morning as she rode the bus, Juliet watched a black man pay his fare and then leave the front door of the bus to re-enter through the back door. As was custom, as soon as the black man stepped off, the white bus driver pulled away, leaving the man behind even though he'd already paid his fare. Juliet jumped up and pulled the emergency cord. She demanded the bus driver open the door and let the black man come on board. 1942, she accepted a research superintendent position at the Montgomery City County Public Library. On July 14, 1957, a cross was burned in her front yard. The next day, anxiety and depression overwhelmed her until she resigned her position at the library. Juliet was under a lot of pressure from which she suffered major panic attacks and recurring nightmares. Who's
The next morning, Juliet's mother found her dead in her bed with an empty bottle of sleeping pills by her side. Juliet left a note that simply said, I am not going to cause any more trouble to anybody. The toll of feeling alone in her work against racism. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Watching WSFA Television, Montgomery. Coming up, you'll hear from the victim, the mother, and this guy who calls himself the bus driver. All this and more on Eyewitness Tonight. I know what happened. I was there. She told that bus driver all. Rosa Parks may have sat down for black justice, but Julia Morgan, she stood up for it. I was driving the bus, and I was approached by Miss Morgan. I just didn't believe we were ready to mix with those people. I hated driving that bus, but I was the last man on the totem pool. You ask me, she had no business standing up for anybody. It's obvious that she had a lot on her mind. I watched her race away because she couldn't eat. And it helped that that young man were finalizing her house and burning crosses in her front yard. Next week, we speak with Tamika Miller, wife of the late Richard Brooks, who was gunned down by this police officer. All this and more Sunday on Eyewitness Tonight.
Bye-bye.